I'll move on to the practical demonstration of how some of the defences Kelly and I were talking about earlier interact with wave action and some of the design features that you might see on the coast with those defences. And we'll do that using the wave tank, which is designed to be something that a STEM club could build for £60, £70 pounds themselves. And the starting point is just having a plastic Christmas tree box, which you can buy from a well-known DIY store. And that not only acts as your wave tank, but it also helps you carry everything around quite handy and store it. And then, using offcuts of plastic and wood, you can actually make your own defences, which I will now show you. Okay, so now we're going to look in a bit more detail at some of the defences in the wave tank. Here is a clay embankment. We have hundreds of kilometres of these around our coast, many of them built after the 1953 tidal surge. As I said, they consist largely of clay. As Kelly said earlier, quite often the front is covered with some kind of stronger revetment, such as concrete block work, Essex blocks, that sort of thing. And you can see one of the design features is that the back face is often more gently sloping than the front face, so that any wave energy that comes over any waves don't cut into the back of the wall, scour out the back of the clay wall and cause a breach. So that's our embankment. We have hundreds of kilometres of these around our coastline and they've worked very well over the previous few decades. The next one we'll look at is a palisade wall. This is just a straight wall, straight up and down. You don't often see these on the open coast in this form because they don't perform very well against wave action. You'll see that later on. But you might see these as concrete capping on the top of sheet piled walls and keys and estuaries and that sort of thing. So it's quite a common feature in those sorts of areas. But there is one thing we can do to make this design more effective on the open coast. And that is a wave recurve. So you can see it's the same up and down straight wall but it's got this design feature here, just a slight recurve at the top of the wall. And this is very effective at returning wave energy back out to sea rather than allowing that wave action to overtop the wall and flood the land behind. All of these have got seals on, which just to help them stay in place in the wave tank. And these are just made out of an inner tube from a bike. The next defence we're going to look at is timber revetment. And you saw examples of these earlier. This is just a uh, regular timber structure and these are quite often used to either protect fences, but more commonly to dissipate the wave energy before hitting soft eroding cliffs. So there's quite a feature around some of our coastline on the east coast, especially around Norfolk and places like that. And we'll show you how that um, works against the palisade wall later in the wave tank. And finally, we'll look at some rock armour or rock revetment. These have many different applications. For the sake of the wave tank, you can make these just with stones from a fish tank, which you can buy from a pet shop and we'll talk about how this operates when we see it in the wave tank later on. So before we begin the demonstrations, let's show you how the wave tank works. The first thing you need is a willing volunteer, in this case George, and then a paddle, which is made out of a sheet of plastic screwed to a piece of wood that slots over the top of the box. George, if you'd like to just simply rotate that paddle back to forwards, and that sets up your wave pattern in the box. You can see the waves travelling down the box and hitting the fence, and you can see the levels against the gauge board there. And that's how your basic STEM club wave tank works. As you can see, we've put some water in our tank and we've put our embankment in there. And we've coloured the water blue with some watercolour, just a very small amount of watercolour paint. And we've got a willing volunteer operating the waves. Uh, so you can see the waves coming up against the embankment and rolling up that front face and the bigger the wave, it may over top and splash down the back. I've now added some more water to the tank to simulate a higher tide or perhaps some sea level rise. So you can see with exactly the same types of waves, the same height of waves, because the sea level against the front of the defence is higher, you can see it's overtopping more and more significantly and more frequently. So you can do lots of experiments like this with the wave tank to show how sea level rise might impact on our defences. So now we have the upright palisade wall that we talked about earlier. And you can see that with the same sort of storm, the same kind of wave pattern, those waves are hitting that front face of that wall and just going straight up in the air and up and over the wall. So that's why you don't see this style of defence in an open coast setting because it doesn't stop that wave overtopping. So now we have the wave recurve, uh, and this is an upright wall but with that design feature at the top with a slight recurved structure at the top of the wall 
which is, as you can see, returning that wave energy back out to sea. So instead of splashing straight up in the air and over the defence, it's hitting that recurve and returning it to sea, preventing overtopping and preventing damage and scour to the back of the wall. is the timber revetment which we have slotted onto the front of the palisade wall and you can see the same level of waves are just being dissipated by that timber structure before it gets to the wall so that wave energy isn't hitting the wall in the way it was before and this is why it's quite useful for protecting erosive cliffs and that kind of thing just for breaking up that wave energy so this is our rock armour in front of that straight palisade wall now rock armour is used in lots of settings, it's a very good way to protect defences and to protect erosive cliffs where it's possible and technically feasible. Uh, rock armour doesn't need maintenance in the same way that timber revetment might. It can be used in other more formal settings such as offshore bars and fishtail groins which we might see at Sea Pauling in Norfolk or Cobbold's Point in Suffolk or along the frontage of Jaywick in Essex. And the way it works is the same way as the timber revetment, that irregular shape is, is breaking up the wave energy before it gets to the defences or the cliff. Where it's used as an offshore bar or a fishtail groin, this protects beach levels, which again protect the toe, the bottom of the defence, and prevent it from being undercut and that defence failing. So, so now we have the palisade wall in the wave tank, and you can see the waves travelling down the tank, hitting the wall, and crashing up to the air and over the wall. So now let's see if our wetland will help. So we put the wetland in place in front of the wall, we're sending exactly the same wave action down the tank, and you can see those waves being dissipated by the plants in the wetland, and they're barely hitting the wall with the same force at all, and they're certainly not crashing up and over.